Zero Tolerance, the Learn to Burn series with Practical Machinist. We're going to continue on with our uh, episode of copper versus graphite. I want to show you the results that we had with the copper and the graphite electrodes. Um, if you look on your left side, you'll see the very finish, the 16 VDI that we were shooting for in both the copper and the graphite. And if I'm not mistaken, you can pretty easily see the graphite is a little more matte than the shiny uh, copper finish. And that's what we've discovered after talking to some technicians from Mitsubishi and um, the, the guys at Poco. So what we've discovered and is that graphite is overall uh, more universal for doing all the work that's needed um, for, for steel. Graphite can go faster, it's more efficient, and there's lots of different grades. So it, it could definitely, you can definitely find what you need when you're working with graphite to achieve what you're after for a cost-effective um, profit-making application. Let's compare the wear factor on the steel as we went from uh, left to right and we burned just rough settings from left to right on both the copper and the graphite. And what we found is as you get towards the full right side, you can see there's more of a rounded point of our sword, uh, both in the graphite and the copper. So there's, it's, a, it's a pretty similar amount of wear I would say. And what you end up discovering is that you're, you're, you're gonna be comparing the cost of graphite versus copper, uh, not only the, the actual material cost difference, but you're gonna, you gotta add it all together, your burn time and your cut time. What ends up coming out um, on, on top is the graphite is faster, it's cheaper. Uh, but POCO 3 compared to regular 110C, Copper is actually more expensive material-wise uh, from what we discovered, but it, you make up the time when you do the cutting, the, the CNC cutting and the burning. And I'm gonna read you some technical information about why copper does not burn as fast as graphite. Um, so let's um, explore some of the other things about the copper tungsten that we didn't discuss earlier. Uh, as you saw in our last episode, we had the copper settings for the copper tungsten and we didn't get a good result. We went from an hour and 10 minute burn with the wrong settings to 44 minutes of burning, which still is almost double the POCO 3 burn time, which was 20, I think it was 20, 20 some minutes, 22 minutes. Um, so there's still, there's still the advantage is still with with the graphite for, for speed and cost. Like I was talking to you earlier, um, we had chosen the wrong settings initially. The CUW is what we should have done for the copper tungsten. And if you look at what you can do for a finish, you can go down to a pretty small finish or pretty fine finish. Six VDI is very small. Um, we, we were actually using a 16. So if you look here, this fine finish mode it only shows matte and it's grayed out. We can't, we can't, um, we can't change it. But if we change this graphite or the electrode material to copper, all of a sudden this lights up and you can change the fine finish to a mirror. And that's what we used to get as fine a finish as we possibly could on that, on that small sword shape. So what we've discovered is talking to Mitsubishi and Poco, is that, that those copper and copper tungsten have very specific purposes. Um, and it's, it's really hard to compare them uh, with graphite as a one-to-one, -one, what would you rather use? The numbers show that graphite is definitely less expensive, more efficient, and more profitable. We're gonna talk about these two uh, different burns that we did here. The one I wanted to talk about, someone made a comment and I want to kind of address it. I burned this going down. I was only, you know, uh, 15 thousandths wide or 10 thousandths wide in that burn. And I went down vertically like this. So my electrode started from the top and went down. Um, most of the time you would want to lay the, uh, uh, your workpiece down like this and you'd want to burn it straight down like this way. 
uh, just because it would wear the trode less and you'd have a better result. That would be what I would recommend normally. What I was trying to show, and I did it specifically for the video, is what it would look like if you were to actually burn these in a blind pocket straight into steel. And this is just a, a way for us to see what it looks like inside. And that's why I did it that way. This brings us to the next thing that I want to talk about is the copper. Um, what I learned and what I didn't know before and now I know now is that copper um, on carbide is not the best combination. Um, I actually set up this electrode and burned a cutter like this because I had to make it shorter because it didn't fit in the holder that I was using. And I tried to, to burn, burn it in half so I could break it. Actually, I burned I burn like three quarters of the way through the carbide and then I literally tap it on the a ground and it'll break off. But uh, you can see how much this wore. It was like an hour and a half, two hours of burning and it literally just wore away the copper um, pretty much to nothing. Um, it did burn some of the carbide. I don't have the one I actually burned, but it did burn some of it, but it was very minimal. Uh, most of the wear came right off of the copper, so that didn't work. If I wanted to do it next time, I would do it with, with copper tungsten. That's that the settings in the machine are set up that way, and um, the technicians and the uh, um, scientists at, at POCO, they recommend doing it that way. Um, copper tungsten is designed for, for burning carbide and, and other materials like that. Today, what I would recommend and what I would do in my shop is I would use the graphite electrodes as we have here um, for 99% of what we burn. If you need something with a super specific fine finish that you cannot touch or bench, I would use copper. Uh, if I have something very, very complicated and hard in carbide, I would use the copper tungsten. I do want to show a demonstration of um, the, carb the graphite electrode and the copper electrode or the tungsten copper, copper tungsten. And we'll see um, actually how this works. Like if you were to, if we look at these electrodes and I actually, if something touched them, like I was trying to explain before, if, if you touch this little piece, it, it literally would break off. If we were to grab the, the copper or the tungsten, cop, copper tungsten and hit it, it would, it would bend and you wouldn't know it. it. It could get hit. It's pretty tough because it's the, the tungsten, but that's, that's, that's bent. And I really can't, I really can't, uh, express how careful you should be with all your electrodes but this one is is dangerous because it can get damaged and you wouldn't see it and and that would end up in your workpiece which is uh, a welding bill you don't want to have along with that uh, chipping or the breaking of the electrode you can see I have a couple electrodes here that we taken off and they basically got this whole edge was really almost sharp and as it got set down and placed you can see all the chips that happened and even a whole section got broke um, pretty clean. So you can see there's damage on this electrode or these electrodes very easily, um, which obviously you're making new electrodes when that happens. All right, another comment that we got um, from last video was the sucker system in cutting carbon is a dirty mess and copper is not so bad to cut. Um, it is gummy, so you need to have, typically you need to have a coolant on it like you were cutting aluminum uh, to keep that uh, lubri lubricity on, on the cutter and keep that electrode nice and clean and crisp. Um, and sometimes you end up with burrs and stuff on your electrode that you have to either bench off or stone off um, when you're finished. The graphite, it can be a complete mess. Um, I've been running a Fidel with a vacuum with like a HEPA filter on it to get by whatever needs to be done. But it's really recommended that you use a, a negative, a negative um, Whole vacuum system or sucker system like the Torah behind me it it allows you to do a lot more and with hardly any mess and try to keep it all contained in the machine now the machines I I know you should have like the highest end carbon seals and all that you can get away with not doing that but it's really recommended that you have good good equipment and keep that sucker pulling the graphite and the dust away from your spindle your bearings and your ball screws and all that so um, a good sucker system is super recommended for that. Some places don't, and you can see the shop's a mess. Uh, graphite can be real dirty real fast, and it sticks and goes over everything. So, um, good sucker is a must have. Here is uh, some graphite, and the graphite, if you notice, has a whole bunch of different features on it. 
And if you look, if you look at the recommendations for burning with copper, they recommend a, you know one single feature to do to do it an area um, where with graphite, you know, based on my conversation with Poco, they're saying that graphite can take up and push a lot more current through the electrode and remove the material faster. And it doesn't have to be all the same type shape. So copper requires a lot more electrodes because of the different shapes where graphite, you can put a whole bunch more on the electrode get away with getting more done with less electrodes in, in that regard as well. So there's another advantage towards the graphite choice. We're getting ready to burn some ribs in an aluminum insert. It's actually uh, part of a, a mold and it's got a rib section. You can kind of see it's been roughed out. Uh, that's going to be pretty deep and it'd be pretty, pretty impossible to get a 30 second cutter hanging out almost over an inch and even over an inch in this section. And there's multiple ribs here and here. So this is an ideal situation for uh, making graphite electrodes. And in this particular machine, we're gonna be burning ribs. Ribs are typically a structure, simply for structure, not necessarily dimensional. Um, with this machine and POCO 200, we can get away with one electrode burning these ribs. And we'll have probably less than a one thou wear overall. Um, when we do that. Now the finish won't be super fine, it'll be a 24 VDI finish, but this whole job will be benched when we're done to probably a 400 or 600 paper. So that will take care of any um, issues in there. And sometimes that's actually good to leave a little stock for the person that's doing the benching or polishing to remove when, they're, when we're done burning. article we got from POCO on graphite versus copper. There was a section in here I wanted to record or read and it's uh, it's basically EDM performance. The, the thermal physical properties of the electrode material determine the ability to process the energy of the EDM cut and remove metal. In generating a spark, peak current is discharged only after the gap between the electrode and the workpiece is broken down. At this point, the electrode em emits electrons that collide with the molecules of the elect dielectric fluid. As a result, the fluid is vaporized and an energy channel is formed, allowing the spark to take place. With copper electrodes, the phenomenon of releasing electrons, thus forming carbon in the gap, takes place only after its own material has melted. This is why on times for copper electrodes are generally much higher than graphite electrode. On the other hand, the graphite electrode is able to emit these electrons as, at much lower temperatures and time requ required to form the energy channel is considerably less. Therefore, graphite initial, initializes the spark faster, resulting in significantly higher metal removal rates. That is um, the technical end of it. So basically you can flow more current through your carbon or your graphite electrode versus um, the copper, which I thought was reverse. So I'm learning as we go here as well. So in the end, you end up determining that graphite is more cost effective and um, faster in speed. Here's a comparison on the left side, you have the roughing electrode of graphite on the left and the roughing electrode of copper. And you can see like the copper wore less in the corner, but if you notice this edge is a lot rougher. On the graphite it's more smooth, but it wore quite a ways in the corner, which leaves more finishing material uh, for the second electrode. So here's the second electrode, graphite on the left and copper on the right. The copper has a better finish but it still didn't make as sharp a corner as the graphite did, which is surprising um, from what I was told. And this is just a 25 times um, comparison. On the left is the graphite and on the right is the finer finish of the copper. 
And here's kind of a breakdown. This shows the cost of the material, the graphite versus copper. It's like 300% difference. Your burn times are faster by a lot, 135%. Uh, this chart kind of explains the, the need for people to move to graphite um, for a majority of the work that's done in, in steel. This is the end of our episode. Thanks for joining us. Remember to subscribe and like. Um, also, list some comments below if you'd like to see something specific on uh, one of the next episodes that we have. So, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.